In this tutorial, we'll be going over an example of what can be created using the spiral tool in Inkscape. And to show you what I mean, I have this simple spiral path that I started off with, and I was able to use it to construct this rolled sheet of paper icon that you can see here. And I will be demonstrating how to create this entire thing. So let me come over here into a new document and we will get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my spiral tool, which is located over here. And the tool settings I wanna use, I already have inputted into my input boxes here. So go ahead and pause the video and type in these values into each of these three boxes here. We want 2.9, 2.0, and 0 0.550. And once you do that, you'll be good to get started. So now what I will do is I will hold the control key and click and drag to the right to create a spiral. And the way that I want this spiral positioned, I want the tail of the spiral on the right hand side, I want that to rest on the horizontal plane so that it's going up vertically like that. We don't want it off center like that. We want it placed just like that. And that's the result we're looking for. And now I'm gonna convert this to a path. So I'll come up here to where it says path and I will go to object to path. And I'm gonna grab my selection tool and I'm gonna flip this vertically by pressing this button right here that says flip uh, object vertically or you could just press the letter V on your keyboard and that works as well. And I'm gonna zoom in on this. I'm gonna click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit just so that this tail right here is not too far up. We don't want that too far up like that. We want this down a little bit and that looks a lot better. So what I'm gonna do now is, first of all, come up here to the tool settings menu. If you hover your cursor over this first of four icons right here, it'll say when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. Make sure you have that turned off right now. We want that disabled. And once we do that, I'm gonna come back over here to my object, click on it again to get back to my scaling handles. And I'm gonna take this bottom arrow icon right here and just scale this up like that. So we have this distorted effect as you can see here. And once we've done that, I'm just gonna click on it again I'm gonna rotate this a little bit more. I'm not quite happy with how that looks. All right, that looks a lot better. And now I'm gonna open up the fill and stroke menu. So come over here to where it says path, or no, object, and go to fill and stroke. And the menu should open up over here on your right hand side of your screen. I'm gonna select the stroke style tab. And I wanna change the width of the stroke from one pixel to five pixels. And I wanna make the caps rounded as well. And then I wanna come down here and bring the opacity of this down in half. This is just gonna make it easier for us to see what we're working with as we move forward. So we now have the top portion designed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this and go to duplicate. And I'm gonna hold the control key and move this down here like this. This is gonna represent the top of the roll of paper and this is gonna represent the bottom. If I could show you what I mean here, this is the shape we're starting off with and this is what we're putting it, we're putting it down there like that. And now what I will do is let me click off of that to deselect it. I'm gonna turn on snapping. I'm gonna come over here to this magnet icon and enable that. Let me expand this menu and we don't want advanced mode. If you're in advanced mode, just come over here to where it says reset to simple snapping mode. And the two options we want enabled in simple mode are bounding boxes and nodes. And we're gonna keep alignment turned off. So now I'm gonna grab my Bezier pen, which is located over here, or the pen tool as it's called. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna to snap to the left side of this spiral. And let me zoom out. I'm gonna bring the line straight down. I'm gonna hold my control key to lock it onto the vertical axis and then snap to the left edge of the other shape like that and press enter. And now we wanna give this stroke the same style. So let me change this to five pixels and I'll make these caps rounded as well. And I'll bring down the opacity of that in half. And you can see why I'm turning down the opacity. I wanna be able to see where this line lines up with the other path, with the spiral path. I wanna make sure everything there is nice and lined up and having partial opacity makes it easy to see through these objects while you do that. So now let's create another line going over here. Let's connect this top part to this bottom part over here. I'm gonna hold control, bring this straight down and then snap it onto the path right there and press enter to create the line. I'm gonna make the width five pixels, make the caps rounded and bring the opacity down in half like that. And now we have the right side in place. Okay, so I'll just zoom in to make sure everything looks correct here. We want this nice and smooth. We don't want anything off center. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Let me snap to this piece. Bring this straight down by holding the control key, snap to the bottom part, click again and press enter. I'm gonna make this five pixels. 
make the caps rounded, bring the opacity down, and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll snap to the right edge, bring the line straight down by holding control. There we go. Let me change the style of this one as well. And it's starting to come together. As you can see, we now have to get rid of this bottom piece down here. So uh, there's various ways we can get rid of this bottom piece down here. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab my select tool. I'm going to enable the ruler on my canvas by pressing control R on the keyboard. If you're using Mac, it would be command R. So I'm going to press command R and now we have the ruler and I'm going to come up here to the horizontal ruler and click and drag to pull a guide down. And I'm going to snap that guide right where the end point of this vertical line is. And now I'm going to select this path right here and I will grab my nodes tool and I will double click right there to add a new node. And I'll make sure that node is selected and I want to come up here to where it says uh, not join selected. We want this one right here, break path at selected nodes. And that's going to break that up into separate pieces. And now I'm going to grab my select tool. I'll go to path and I will select break apart. Deselect it by clicking off onto the canvas. And I'm going to take this piece and just press delete to get rid of it. And then I will get rid of the guide. I'll press, I'll click on the guide, hover the cursor over it until it highlights red, press the delete key to get rid of the guide. And now I will get rid of the ruler as well by holding uh, command and pressing R or control R if you're on Windows or Linux. So a lot of this is in place now. All we have to do now is create these lines of text or what are supposed to be lines of text. And then we'll fill this in with some color. So let me, uh, let me click on this object up here, the original spiral path. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll hold control and bring this straight down like this. Let's turn off snapping now. We don't need that anymore. And I just want to, I just want to take this segment right here and use that. So let me grab the rectangle tool and I'll click and drag and create a rectangle over that portion of the spiral right there. We just want to take this selection and then I'll select both of those and I will go to path and select cut path. And that should break it up into separate pieces. And now we can just take this piece right here and get rid of that and get rid of this piece right here as well. And let me move this up. I'm going to hold control while doing this so that we lock it onto the vertical axis. And I'm going to duplicate this instead of right clicking and going to duplicate. I'm just going to press control D or command D if you're on Mac. And then I'll take this duplicate copy and move that down. And I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to select both of these control D to duplicate, bring them down here. And I'll do this maybe one more time. Bring these ones down here. And now we want to make sure that these lines are evenly spaced. So let me select all of them. And I will open up my align and distribute menu. You can access that by going to object and selecting align and distribute. I already have mine open over here in my dock dockable menu. So I'll just click on that. And the option I'm looking for over here where it says distribute, we want to choose this option right here that says even vertical gaps. And when I click on that, it makes everything spaced apart evenly. And what we could do now is I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. What we could do now is we can combine all of these strokes together so that this becomes one shape. So I'm going to select everything and I will go to path and select combine. And once you do that, you can come back over to your fill and stroke menu and we can bring the opacity all the way up. And if you want, you can make the stroke larger. Another way that you can make the stroke larger is that you can just scale this down. I'm going to hold control and scale this down. And since we have this setting disabled, as we scale the object, the stroke size will stay the same. So if you want a heavier stroke, you can scale this down like that and you can see the result as it's happening. And once you're happy with the thickness of the stroke, let's enable this setting again so that now we can enlarge this object without losing those proportions. And uh, I'm actually going to adjust that a little bit. I don't want it that heavy. Okay, that looks a little better. So all that's left now is to color this thing in. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. And I'm going to come over here to my stroke paint tab and I'm going to give this a dark blue color. I'll come over here to the original design. You can see how I colored it here. This is I'm going to go for something similar right here. I mean, obviously you can color this however you'd like. I'm just going to go with this blue theme. I'll make this a little darker. And I want to fill in these empty areas here using the paint bucket tool. So let me grab the paint bucket tool and I'm going to click on this area right here to fill it in. And I'm going to change that color to something else. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. Let me press control Z. I want to choose the fill tab, not the stroke paint tab. There we go. Let me make this a different color. I'll go with a lighter shade of blue. And then I'll come over here and fill this in as well. I'll make this a 
I don't know why it's applying a stroke. Let me get rid of that. There we go. I'll take this and I'll make this one a little darker. Maybe I'll put a little more blue in there. And then I'll do this one more time. I'll fill that one in and I'll make this one the darkest of them all. So let me make it a little darker. And I'm actually gonna make this stroke a little darker as well to accommodate these uh, other colors. And once that's done, we wanna raise this to the top. So I'm gonna press this button over here that says raise to the top. We want that, we want the stroke object on top of everything else, on top of the fill objects. And we could zoom out and you can see we are finished. So that's an example of what you can do using the spiral tool in Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.